The biggest problems that I see as it relates to, to engaging web leads, the first one, and this should be pretty obvious after me sharing that data, is that we're too slow to get in contact with them, right? And, you, and you've seen what just the difference of two or three minutes makes um, in, terms of, in terms of getting in contact with, with web leads. Um, the second problem is that we respond to them in a way that's too hard to reply to. Right? And to illustrate that, uh, point number three is that we respond with the wrong level of energy. Welcome to the Master Dealmaker's Secrets Podcast. And now, here's sales growth strategist, John Blake. Welcome to Master Dealmaker Secrets. I am John Blake. This is episode 184. And we're going to be talking about the three keys to engaging web leads. This is going to be a particularly topical and important episode for you because there is a lot of business that's now being generated through, through the web. There's a lot of people investing in digital advertising and there are some really important changes that are happening and some important things that need to change in terms of your approach when you are engaging web leads. But before we do that, if you have got leads that you've already spoken to, so people that you've actually already connected with, you've spoken to them, you've made an offer to them, but they haven't converted yet, I want you to head over to johnblakeaudio.com and at that address, you are going to find my training on exactly how to convert more of those people that are still in your proposal sent column, uh, but haven't actually converted into a paying client. JohnBlakeAudio.com. What you will get is my 15 minute training that walks you through my entire strategy end to end for converting more of those people that you've spoken to that haven't converted yet. What you'll get is the 15 minute training, but what you'll also get is a PDF document that has all of my templates, exactly what to say when you ring them on the phone, what to say when you get voicemail message, what to say when you get through. What you'll also get is what to write in your emails, my exact word for word templates. This could not be any clearer or any easier to use. And what I know is that it will result in extra sales for you. It is a particularly powerful and valuable resource, but I'm giving it away for free. You will get it at johnblakeaudio.com and all you need to do is pop your details in, I think it's like first name and email, and you can download it and you'll have it and you can use it. You can teach it to other people in your team and they'll get a great result with it as well. Um, grab it, use it, put it into practice, let me know how you go. I would love to get your feedback. Okay, so what we're going to do now, as I said, we're going to talk about the three keys to engaging web leads. So the five biggest problems that I see as it relates to engaging web leads is this. Um, and sorry, before I do that, I want to give you some data. So this is, this is the most up-to-date data that I've got on, on what is going on with web leads. Now, uh, I, th this may or may not be accurate, but it's, it's my take. Like we live in this world where attention spans are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So uh, about 12 months ago, the most, the most watched length of a video was 20 seconds, right? 12 months later, it's gone down to nine seconds. So, so our attention span as a, as a society is getting less and less and less. And so the way we engage with, with, with leads and just as importantly, the way that the way that uh, people who are inquiring engage with companies has shifted considerably, and we need to and to give us an insight into that. What I wanted to share with you to start off with is some stats ar around how web leads are, how they how they behave, and how they are treated. So, first one is that if you call a web lead within five minutes, your lead conversion will be eight times higher. Right? If you call them within five minutes, less than one percent of leads are called that quickly. Right, so you will be you will have eight times the likelihood of converting them if you call them within five minutes, but less than one percent of leads are called that quickly. 
if you call within five minutes, you are 21 times more effective with that lead than if you call after 30 minutes, right? So the half-life in terms of how quickly these atrophy, leads atrophy is mind-blowingly quick. It is out of control. So call within five minutes, 21 times more effective than after 30 minutes. If you call in minute one, right? So one minute after the person's inquired, you are 391% more likely to convert that lead. If you call within two minutes, you are 160% more likely to convert that lead. If you call within three minutes, you are 98% more likely to convert that lead. So you can see how much of a difference two minutes makes from, a, from the conversion in terms of speed to contact a web lead. It's, it's that crazy, right? You are 60 times more likely to connect after one hour than after a day. Uh, a couple of other scary bits of data here. 57.1% of new lead follow-up attempts happen after a full week has passed. The best follow-up day is Tuesday. So you're actually 19% more likely to actually get through to somebody on a Tuesday. And the best time is between 9 and 10%. And you forty you have a 44% higher um, likelihood of getting hold of somebody between 9 and 10 o'clock than what you do between 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, and so credit where credit's due. This came from a book called The Conversion Code uh, by Chris Smith. So if you want to delve deeper into some of this data, that's, that's the place to look. A lot of people who listen to the podcast want to know what we do over at Master Dealmaker Secrets. And effectively what we do is we work with sales professionals and business owners all over the world who are seeing massive increases in their top line sales revenue. So we help business owners and sales professionals to effectively focus on the three key drivers to growing sales revenue in your business. The first one is controlling the message that you send out into the marketplace so that potential clients see and hear and read what you do as an opportunity as opposed to your competitors. The second thing that we do is we help you to create a direct path to the 20% of your ideal clients that will deliver 80% of the revenue. So everyone knows the 80-20 rule. We help you to de develop a direct path to the 20% of the people that are gonna give you 80% of your sales revenue in your business. And the third thing that we, that we allow you to do, that we create a process for, is for you to be able to double the amount of leads that you get that convert into paying clients. So if this is of interest, we do have an application only process to become involved in, in this particular program. And to, to get to there, all you need to do is is to go to www.johnblakescall.com. So it's J-O-H-N-B-L-A-K-E-S-C-A-L-L.com. And there's a couple of questions to answer there. And then what you'll do is, is get on a, a quick conversation with me. And I can find out a little bit more about what you've got going on in your business and see potentially whether what you are doing would be a fit for what we could help you with. And at that point, I can extend an invitation if it's a fit and uh, you can make the choice to come on board or not. So uh, that, that's the opportunity. That would be the next step if you're looking at how you can take things to the next level. If you're enjoying what you're hearing on the podcast, if you're getting value from it, uh, I invite you to do that and uh, I will look forward to talking to you. The website is uh, www.johnblakescall.com. Talk to you soon. Okay, so the biggest problems that I see as it relates to, to engaging web leads. The first one, and this should be pretty obvious after me sharing that data, is that we're too slow to get in contact with them, right? And, you, and you've seen what just a difference of two or three minutes makes um, in, terms of, in terms of getting in contact with, with web leads. Um, the second problem is that we respond to them in a way that's too hard to reply to, right? And to illustrate that, uh, point number three is that we respond with the wrong level of energy, okay? So 
What we know is that if somebody inquires with you, they've probably inquired, if it's a web lead, they've probably inquired with about three to five tabs open in their browser, right? So they've checked out probably somewhere in the vicinity of between two and five different companies and they have filled out a web inquiry with five companies, right? Now, contextually, this is probably happening at night. It could be, it, it's, it's most likely happening at a, around 8, 8.30 after the kids have gone to bed and the person's had, you know, two or three glasses of wine. And so by tomorrow morning, they're probably going to forget who they inquired with. But what happens? Well, the, the business owner or the salesperson gets to work and they see that there's a lead there and they think, wow, and they rub their hands together and they go, awesome. So what do they do? They send an email and the email's got like four or five paragraphs. It's got a whole bunch of PDF attachments. It's, um, you know, it's, it's preempting a call. It's, it's, you know, it's so, we, we, we come on so strong because we're so excited that, that, um, that somebody has sent an inquiry through. But we, what we don't realize is that in terms of energy, the person's inquired in terms of their level of engagement with us, They've inquired down here, but our response is up here. Like we'll, we'll send them a five or a six paragraph email with a whole bunch of PDF attachments. We respond up here and it's too much too soon, right? Way too much too soon. And so uh, in, in keeping with that, we often ask for a phone call too early and the person, um, because they're, you know, it's still early in their, in their process, in their research, right? Like, because everyone thinks that they're doing research. Uh, it's too early in their process and they tend to ghost us and we don't get through to them because we've come on too strong. We've come on too strong. Um, we need to create context for a telephone call. We need to create context for a telephone call. And the, 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 the other problem I see is we aren't using their preferred media. So we're trying to move to a phone call when... As we all know, there are people that just, you know, love text messages. You know, like we, we've got now two or three generations of, of, of consumers that, um, that don't pick up the phone. I think it's like 80%, of, you know, nearly 80% of people just don't pick up the phone. It goes straight through to voicemail. Over 50% of people don't even check voicemail. So, so if someone's using a preferred mode of contact, conduct, uh, contact we need to respond using that, using that particular mode and they will typically only move to a telephone call once we've created a, a valid reason for that to happen, right? So often we try to get people on a call too early before we've created a reason for there to be a telephone conversation. So the three pillars are engage, get a response, and convert, right? So engage the person. We need to then get a response from that person and then we can convert that web inquiry to a telephone call, right? So we've got a whole system that does that. So the first one is we need to engage. So the, the five keys, right? The first one is we need to engage immediately. That should be abundantly off, uh, obvious from what I've talked about so far. The second one is we need, to, we need to ask them an easy to answer and relevant question, right? And this is going to differ depending on what it is that you sell, but it needs to be a relevant question, but it needs to be easy to answer, but it can't be a let's arrange a telephone call conversation. It can't be that. It's just got to be something that, that creates engagement. And, and this, as I said, is going to differ depending on what you sell. Um, the third is we need to have responses that are conversational versus sounding robotic and scripted. So it's it's kind of ironic, but you know with with these systems that we create, we we are wordsmithing the replies to make them sound like they haven't been wordsmithed. <laughs> right? It's it's quite ironic. We we're we're spending a lot of time scripting out these responses so that they don't sound scripted. Um the fourth key is we need to convert to a we need to convert to permission to have a, a telephone conversation. So in most cases, we need to ask 
usually two or three questions backwards and forwards to create that that context for 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 it to be appropriate for a telephone call to, to take place. Um, and then number five, as as we've alluded to already, we need to use that preferred mode of conduct uh, contact um, wherever possible. So I hope this has been valuable. Thanks you, thank you so much again for listening. I really appreciate uh, all the feedback, positive feedback I get on the podcast, and uh, and as I said, always appreciate you guys tuning in. And uh, I trust that you will get value from what we've covered off on today and uh, in the previous episode on the strategic advantages 183 for presenting proposals. But um, thanks again, and I will look forward to talking to you on the next podcast. You've been listening to Master Dealmaker Secrets with John Blake. Subscribe to get more in-depth strategies and maximize your sales process with new episodes every other week and double your inquiry to sale conversion with the lead flow you already have, go to johnblakeaudio.com for his exclusive, free, no-fluff audio training and companion PDF guide.